I love Christmas. There are carols and cookies and hot chocolate and lights and mistletoe. And I'm about to ruin that last one forever for you. Now before we get to the science here, we have to start with the name. Some people think that the name mistletoe actually came from the German mist for dung and tang for branch because it grows in trees and its seeds can be spread in bird poop. Yeah, next time somebody snags you under the mistletoe, snag them with that fun fact. Dung branch. So mistletoe lives in trees and it's a parasite, so it actually pulls water and nutrients from those trees. However, it does get some of its food from sunlight through photosynthesis, which means that it's actually only half a parasite or hemiparasitic. However, if there's enough mistletoe living on a tree, it can actually stunt its growth, or if the infestation is large enough, it can kill it. Okay, super cool tangent. So this idea of a parasite killing its host actually leads us to a slightly different concept of parasitoids. And it's only a few letter shift, but it means a parasite that ultimately kills or sterilizes its host. Some insect parasitoids will live on or in their host as immature organisms, often feeding on their fluid and organs, and then leaving the dead host behind when they pupate and become an adult. It's bad manners to kill your host, but it makes sense if you only need it for one life stage. Some wasps will actually lay their eggs inside live caterpillars, and the larva wasps, once hatched, will eat the caterpillars as they grow. There is an amazing video of this from National Geographic, and I'll put the link in the doobly-doo because the caterpillar is still alive when the eggs are laid inside of it. And it's still alive when the larval wasps hatch and start eating around its organs. And it's still alive when the larval wasps eat through its skin and, you know, emerge. And it is still alive as the larval wasps begin to pupate and it will actually protect the larval wasps that have just eaten through its skin. And it's crazy and a little creepy and awesome. Nature is freaking cool. So the next time you find yourself under some mistletoe, you're not going to be thinking about that babe walking your way. You're going to be thinking about larval wasps eating through caterpillar skin. You're welcome. So let's circle back around to mistletoe. Mistletoe has been described as a keystone species. A keystone species is one that has a disproportionately large impact on its environment relative to its abundance. It can also help maintain the structure and integrity of an ecological community. The name comes from the architectural term for the keystone of an arch. It's a small wedge-shaped stone added right at the top of the arch, it's added at the end, and it locks all the other stones in place. Without it, the arch would fall. Mistletoe grows year-round, constantly producing leaves, flowers, and berries even when other plants have stopped. This means that it's a constant food source for foraging animals in what might be an otherwise barren landscape. A researcher in Madagascar found that lemurs use mistletoe as a type of fallback food when other plants and trees have started holding back and conserving their resources and stopped producing fruit. This ability for mistletoe to continue growing during drier seasons when other plants are holding back and conserving their resources is probably due to its hemiparasitic nature as it can continue to steal water from its host plant. Now mistletoe also drops a lot of leaves and this leaf litter can be a great carbon source that microbes can turn into healthy soil, which in turn can stimulate other healthy plant growth. So while mistletoe might be draining life from its specific host tree, it's providing huge benefits to the plant and animal life in its ecosystem. A study published this year tested this experimentally. The researchers looked at three different areas. Areas where there was no mistletoe, areas where there was mistletoe, and areas where they removed mistletoe. They compared bird diversity before and after removing the plants. They found that after three years, total species richness had dropped by 20.9% in the areas where they removed the mistletoe. Areas where they didn't touch the mistletoe had a slight increase in species richness, and areas that never had mistletoe to begin with had no change. A 20.9% drop in total species richness is a big deal. That's a small plant making a big difference. That's a keystone species. As an interesting aside, though the researchers saw a drop in the species nesting in the mistletoe, they didn't actually see a drop in the proportion of species eating the mistletoe. This led the researchers to believe that mistletoe's main role as a keystone species is actually soil enrichment via leaf litter. This soil enrichment drives productivity of all woodland plants, therefore increasing general food availability. Okay, so I guess mistletoe isn't all dung branches and larval wasps. I guess it can be pretty important too. Go forth, do science, and Merry Christmas.